What's going on guys, Flynn Masters coming back at you with a new video, and today we'll be ranking all 20 winners of Hell's Kitchen. So my last Hell's Kitchen video was well received, and now that we got a nice even numbers of chefs to rank, I figured now is the perfect time for a winner's ranking. And obviously a winner's ranking for Hell's Kitchen is pretty interesting because, you know, this isn't a show like Survivor or Big Brother where you look at their strategic and social games to compare winners. Like no, all these chefs won for the exact same reason, they did well enough on challenges and services, and ultimately their leadership proved to be worthy enough to be a head chef for Gordon. And Ramsey, and it's really hard to separate a lot of these winners. So for the criteria I looked at, you know, I looked for a couple of things. First off, the obvious, you know, being on how dominant they were as a chef, you know, kind of similar to Outwit I'll play Outlast and Survivor. For Hell's Kitchen, you have, you know, the challenges, services, and leadership. As obviously some winners have had a rockier road to the end than others, while some other winners were far better leaders than some other winners, even if they made them some more mistakes. I also look at the size of the cast, so you know, unfortunately the first three winners are going to be penalized for only having a cast of 12 where every other winner has had anywhere from 15 to 20 person casts and that just simply means more competition more pressure compared to the first three winners and a big thing i looked at which i actually ended up factoring a lot more than i thought i would was a competition of other talent they had to deal with throughout the season. So even if you were a dominant force in your season, if you had virtually no competitors, I'm going to have to knock you for it, compared to a chef who won when there were so many other valuable options to win. Because you have to remember that Ramsey not only looks for a talented chef, but he wants that certain look. You know, he doesn't want some obese person running his kitchen. He doesn't want any older chefs most of the time because he wants someone he can work with in the long run. And with this being reality TV, he doesn't want any douchebags winning the show. Now, there are, of course, outliers every once in a while, while, but for the most part, this is what Ramsey looks for, which might give certain chefs the advantage over others who might have been more talented. So with all that said, let's get this list started with number 20. The weakest chef in Hell's Kitchen history, in my opinion, is the winner of Season 8, Nona Seavely. And for me, it's a pretty obvious choice with putting Nona at the bottom, as not only do I think she only won due to Ramsey not wanting to give the hated Russell the win, but also this is the weakest group of chefs in Hell's Kitchen history, and her performance this season wasn't exactly great despite the weak competition. She obviously got off to a bad start with the six in her dish, and from there just kind of floated by, and was shielded by other terrible chefs such as Emily, Melissa, and Sabrina on the red team. Then she really struggled in the mid portion of the competition. I mean, you know, she was put up for elimination two times in a row. She got really fortunate at the final eight when she had a disaster service and got kicked out and could have been in serious trouble had the red team lost that service. She did respond pretty well from her rocky mid game with a strong final couple of performances but again look at her competition she had at the end. I mean Trevor and Sabrina are some of the worst black jackets ever and Gil really struggled in her last couple of services so no one was basically locked for a top three anyway. And I'll give her massive credit for a strong performance on the pass in the final four and ultimately shown to be more deserving than Julian to make the finale. But like I was saying earlier, if Russell was even 30% less of a douche, he wins this season, as he was far and away the best chef this season. But at the end of the day, this is reality television, and Ramsey was pretty much forced to give Nona the win, as Russell is quite possibly the most hated contestant in Hell's Kitchen history. So between the horrible competition, Nona's shaky performance throughout the season, and Russell 100% deserving the win over her, there are simply too many flaws to overlook for Nona, and to me, she's the worst winner in Hell's Kitchen history. But again, that's not to say she's not a great chef, I mean, because you obviously have to be great to make it past even one service of Gordon Ramsay, but I just feel like 19 other winners were better than her. At number 19, we have the first real shocking winner in Hell's Kitchen history, and it was shocking mostly due to how inconsistent this chef was throughout the season, and that is the winner of Season 4, Christina Machamer. And yeah, she was put up five times for elimination this season, and five out of seven times when she was one of the people who could go up for elimination. And again, similar to how Nona only won due to Russell being an asshole, had Petrosa been 20 years, or heck, even 10 years younger, he without question wins this season. Ramsey just simply didn't want a near 50 year old man running his restaurant for the long run, which is why Christina beat Petrosa. And another thing, you know, was the competition this season was pretty low. I mean, not to the level of season, of season 8 or even some other seasons, but I mean, freaking Matt made a black jacket. So, I mean, come on. And yes, you could argue that two of her five nominations, you know, didn't really count, as she did nothing wrong her second service, and the final three nomination, you know, doesn't really count as a nomination. But still, she was very consistent throughout the season, but was never as bad as people like Roseanne and Matt went next to them for elimination. She did have two standout performances highlighted by Ramsey in services 3 and 11, but again, this is when he routinely did the best of the best and best of the worst, so I don't know how much I should prop her up because of that. And her time on the pass was decent at best, as she really struggled at the start, but thankfully, Corey had a horrendous time on the pass, and Christina was able to sneak away into the final two. 
So in the end, while I want to put Christina up a little further than second to last for a shiny moment she did have in Hell's Kitchen, she was super inconsistent throughout, going up for elimination basically every time she got the chance, didn't really stand out much as a leader, was against a pretty weak group of chefs, and would have definitely lost to Petrosa if he was closer to her age. So with all those flaws, I can't look over them. So she lands here at 19. Now at number 18, we have a winner who many people consider the worst winner due to simply being, you know, probably the most unlikable winner in Hell's Kitchen history. But here at 18, I have the winner of Season 15, Arrow Malone. And Arrow is an interesting winner to discuss due to the fact that she's like no winner we've ever seen. I mean, like I said, she's basically the only villain winner in the show's history. And it's not like she completely outperformed everyone to deserve that honor. I mean, she definitely had her faults. I mean, right away, she was nominated in the second episode, the earliest a winner has ever been nominated. And I think she was actually in a lot more danger than it appeared on paper. Because remember, Ramsey asked for three nominees to service instead of the usual two. And Sharkino was the third nominee despite having the worst service. Now again, was she really the third nominee? I'm not sure. But let's say it was the usual two nominees, and it was only Mies and Ariel nominated for elimination. I think there's a good chance Ariel might go there. I mean, as we saw, Ramsey wanted to see a lot more out of Mies, and I don't think Sharkina's performance, while it was bad, I don't think it was bad enough to warrant, you know, elimination when she wasn't nominated, especially this early in the game. Ariel had an abysmal performance at the final 10, and was incredibly lucky that Joe had an even worse performance, despite being on the winning team. And of course, what makes this season so great is also what knocks her down in my rankings. This is one of the most unpredictable group of chefs of all time. I mean, people like Jared, Ashley, and Chad, who dominated the first couple of services, struggled extremely bad in the second half. While players like Manda and Kristen, who were also nominated early in the game along with Ariel, made it all the way to Black Jackets. What makes this season so great is that there's no standout chef this season like there usually is. But unfortunately for Ariel, that knocks her down in my rankings a bit because have we seen a chef like Danny or, you know, even a non-winner like Kevin, you know, they run away with this season. Ariel was fortunate to be in a super inconsistent cast, to the point where everyone had been nominated at least once by the final seven. Now, you have to give her massive props for dominating some services, especially in the back half while dealing with a foot injury, and she definitely had the best leadership skills out of all the chefs there, but she wasn't super consistent throughout, and in most seasons would have been a runner-up at best. And since there are so many other winners who are just simply much more dominant chefs throughout their time in Hell's Kitchen, Ariel lands here at 18. Now we're on to number 17, and I know a lot of people think this person should be at the very bottom due to a certain twist, while there's also some people who may argue this person should be in the top 5. But here at 17, I have the winner of Hell's Kitchen All-Stars, Michelle Chabelle. And first things first, you gotta give her credit for doing well on an All-Star season. Now yes, a lot of these All-Stars were there mostly to cause trouble, but a good portion of these chefs were legit All-Stars. And that alone I think you have to give credit to Michelle for, and is likely the reason why so many people might put her in the top 5, just based on winning an All-Star season. And she was pretty consistent throughout the season, earning her two best of the best awards from Ramsey. But this was flat out Nick's season, I mean I think we can all agree on that. And with him and Benjamin really dominating the season, the only way Michelle could survive was a surprise Final 3 twist, the first time ever. It's just all very suspicious that this would happen, you know, when Michelle was clearly the weakest of the three. And then at the final three, Nick was eliminated by some random chef. The first time ever somebody was eliminated by someone other than Ramsey, and it came in all-star season at the final three. Again, it's all just very questionable. And at the final dinner service, Benjamin and Michelle both had their faults, but I think Benjamin clearly showed he was a better leader not only in the final dinner service, but throughout the entire season. But Michelle was given the victory. So while Michelle was pretty good throughout the season, with a couple of standout performances, was only up for a nomination one time, and won in an all-star season, I don't think anyone can deny the suspiciousness over everything that happened at the final three, and just something you can't overlook. So while you would think an all-star winner would be an automatic top fiver, she lands in my bottom five, ultimately here at 17. Now at 16, we have the first ever Hell's Kitchen winner, Michael Ray. And yeah, I mean he was the first person to survive Hell's Kitchen, he was the first person to survive the wrath of Ramsay, who would go on to become a cultural icon, and he was great throughout the season. But at the end of the day, this was the first season of the show, and he was competing against only 11 other chefs. And the thing about season 1 compared to other seasons, was the cast weren't all exactly chefs. A lot of them had other full-time jobs like finance manager, purchasing supervisor, and office assistant. It was basically like what you see in MasterChef. 
However, Michael was one of the only full-time chefs there, giving him the massive advantage. And he was eligible for only one nomination in the entire pre-Black Jacket portion of the game. So even if he had a bad service, Ramsey was playing by the rules in Season 1, so Michael would have only had to survive one round to be a Black Jacket. And while the competition was actually pretty decent, especially for Season 1, some chefs there were clearly not ready to take on this kind of pressure and environment. So while Michael certainly did a great job during his time in Hell's Kitchen, he was in one of the best spots going in, basically had a free ride to the final five, and had virtually no other competition other than Ralph and maybe Jessica. So while I'm confident Michael could do well and win, you know, other Hell's Kitchen seasons, I can't overlook the blatant advantages he had going into this competition, so he lands here at 16. Now at 15, we have one of my all-time favorite winners due to his amazing story, but you can't deny his inconsistent performance throughout the season, and that is the winner of Season 12, Scott Cummings. And yeah, I mean, let's start with the obvious. The dude was put up seven times for elimination, and he had other bad services outside of those nominations as well. Another big knock is that he was massively benefited by Joy's quit, literally the most shocking moment in Hell's Kitchen history. Now I guess you could argue that we don't know how Joy would have done at the past and final dinner service, and Scott still might have beat her, but I mean barring a miracle, I don't think Scott was even making it past the final five, and that miracle just so happened to be Joy quitting the show, which she was the freaking front runner to win. And I do think he was also massively saved by Gabriel's bad performance at the final seven. Now, while I think Gabriel was going home over Scott barring a perfect performance, that was a really bad performance at the final seven from Scott. Probably his true, really only horrifically bad performance throughout the season. And again, got incredibly lucky Gabriel had an even worse performance. And had Gabriel had a decent performance, I think it's almost a guarantee that Scott goes at seven. But despite those negatives, you can't deny Scott's never say die attitude and perseverance throughout the season. And he was an absolute force as a leader of the kitchen, with arguably the best pass and final service performance in the show's history. And he was against a very strong cast, with 19 other competitors, obviously tied with season 11 for the most competition ever. And yeah, for the most part, the season was filled with talent, as early boosts like Chris and Jessica showed some serious skills at times, Anton is one of the best non-Black Jacket chefs in the Hell's Kitchen history, and the Black Jackets this season are one of the strongest Black Jacket groups in the show's history. And again, the reason why he was nominated so many times was due to the fact that he was never the worst. I mean, the only questionable decision you could argue was Ramsey saving Scott over Keisha, but I mean, come on, Keisha was simply not ready to be a head chef. So Scott had some very extreme highs in Hell's Kitchen, being one of the best leaders in Hell's Kitchen history, and probably the best comeback chef in the history of the show. But you can't overlook his inconsistency, being nominated seven times, and being massively benefited from Gabriel's all-time bad performance at the Final Seven, and Joy's shocking quit at the Final Five. So as much as I love Scott, his flaws are too glaring compared to some other winners, which puts him here at 15. Now landing at number 14, we have a pretty interesting winner to rank, as this chef was great all season, but really never struck me as a head chef or winner material, and that is the winner of Season 7, Holly Ugalde. And Holly is similar to other winners that we'll be talking about later, who on paper you would think would be a lot higher in my rankings for never being nominated and being a great chef in a team of terrible chefs, but for me, she never really stood out. And this is something that I'll be faulting other winners later on in my rankings, like I said, but even more so for Holly, as not only did I feel she didn't really stand out the entire season, but if anything, she was noticeably bad as a leader. I mean, I remember watching the season when I was 10 years old, and even then I couldn't imagine Holly winning with her personality and lack of upfront leadership. Like in the instances where she did screw up, I mean, she would completely lose her voice and look like she was on the verge of tears when Ramsey yelled at her. Her one stand-up performance that was highlighted by the show this season was her performance on the dessert station. And it's like, what the heck, it's desserts. Like, two people have ever done bad on that station. Now, I do credit Holly for being consistent on the worst red team in Hell's Kitchen history, but again, I I wonder if the reason why they were so bad was due to their best chef simply lacking the leadership qualities to help lead the kitchen. And the competition this season was pretty good, especially the Black Jacket group, one of the strongest group of Black Jackets in the show's history. But let's be honest, Benjamin without question deserved to win this season, and most likely does win if he wasn't such a douche. But even more so questionable than Benjamin, I still don't know to this day why Holly was crowned the winner over Jay. I mean, Jay was far more of a standout leader in comparison to this season, did just as well if not better than Holly on the past and final dinner service, and he's literally working as the sous chef right now for Ramsey and Hell's Kitchen. So I really don't get the Holly win. So Holly is a very interesting winner to me, as she did fine throughout, but not only did she not stand out, but I think it's probably the weakest leader in the history of Hell's Kitchen winners. And I think she was completely outshined this season by Benjamin and Jay. So despite the on-paper dominant victory, Holly just simply seemed like the weakest leader to ever win the show. So she lands here at 14. 
at 13, we have a pretty interesting winner to rank, as this person not only had the most contestants to deal with, but the most amount of services and challenges. But the problem is, nothing about this person really stood out to me, and that is the winner of Season 11, Janelle Witt. And the thing with Janelle and the next person we'll be talking about, is that she didn't really do anything wrong. I mean, she was put up for elimination one time out of the 17 services, but at the same time, and similar to Holly, nothing about her time really stands out. And for a chef that was in so many episodes, the fact that she doesn't really have any standout moments is not a good look. You know, I think her biggest shiny moment was probably her final sixth service when she went over to the blue team and they had one of their better services. But other than that, I mean, she was fine, but none of her services, challenge performances, or even her leadership were top tier. You know, for example, in the first dinner service, when chefs were getting kicked out left and right, I think of Nedra and Jessica dominating and leading the kitchen that night, while Janelle was just doing fine. Mary, after her bad start, had so many noteworthy performances over Janelle. You know, so obviously while she had plenty of good performances, I don't think there were many amazing performances that we've seen from winners above her, and for that matter, even some of the winners below her. And then another slight penalty because the cast of this season is pretty weak, and obviously the blue team is an all-time bad team, but I think people forget just how bad the red team was this season, especially during the dinner services. And look at the black jacket competition. I mean, Susan just wasn't ready, obviously. Cindy, unfortunately, could never win a season. So really, her only competition was John, who was a great chef, but a below average leader. And Mary, who was a great leader, but a very inconsistent service performer. So while you have to give massive credit to Janelle for doing well in so many of the challenges and services throughout the season, she didn't have much competition despite there being 19 other chefs. And yet, despite all her good performances, there wasn't any great performances that stood out during her time, even though she had the most amount of episodes for a winner in Hell's Kitchen history. So when you combine all these factors, I think you get a pretty average winner of the show, and she lands here at 13. Now at number 12, we have probably the most forgettable winner in Hell's Kitchen history, Latasha McCutcheon, the winner of Hell's Kitchen's most forgettable season, season 13. And here's the thing about Latasha. She had a bumpy start and wasn't an absolute standout throughout the season. She was just kind of there, similar to Janelle. I mean, I can't think of one service where she was the clear standout. And even throughout the game, while she was a front runner and one of the more consistent chefs, she wasn't exactly running circles around everyone, despite never being nominated. And that's the thing with this season, everyone was just kind of there. Like the Black Jackets this season weren't the worst, but they definitely weren't the best. Bryant was a worthy competitor next to Latasha. But he wasn't exactly a Kevin or T runner-up that Latasha outperformed. And that's the thing about Latasha, nothing about her stood out. She just kind of skated along, doing what she needed to do. But what puts her over Janelle for me, because I do think Janelle was more consistent and obviously had a lot more services to deal with, is the cast of 13 was far better than the cast of 11. So while Latasha obviously did great things to win Hell's Kitchen and earn a head chef's job working for Ramsay, she's simply not a standout winner. So because of that, she lands here in the middle of my rankings at number 12. At number 11, we have the first true iconic winner of Hell's Kitchen, but similar to Michael, she didn't have much competition, and that is Heather West, the winner of Season 2. And Heather outright dominated everyone throughout. She was a standout in the challenges, won two best of the worst, and is arguably the best woman leader in Hell's Kitchen history. But she was facing practically no competition other than Keith, and I mean, come on, while Keith is an amazing chef, he certainly couldn't command the kitchen, and honestly, I just could never in a million years see a guy like Keith lead a Gordon Ramsay restaurant. And I mean, look at some of the other chefs. Tom, Giacomo, and Polly are some of the worst chefs to ever step foot in Hell's Kitchen. Chefs like Rachel, Maribel, and Garrett were super inconsistent, and Virginia is arguably the worst runner-up in Hell's Kitchen history, as she was nominated five out of the six eligible times she could go up for elimination. So while Heather was an incredible chef, she had a small cast to cook against, and this cast was arguably even weaker than season one. And I really debate on whether I should put Heather and the next winner on my list below Latasha and Janelle due to the fact that they had so much less competition. But I decided that Heather and the next winner are simply too great of chefs to be any further down the list than they already are, as I could easily see them being top 5 winners if they faced a larger and tougher cast. So for this list, Heather lands at 11. And speaking of my next winner, here he is, the winner of the very next season after Heather, and the last old school winner who competed against only 11 other chefs. But that still doesn't take away from his greatness. And at number 10, I had the legendary Rock Harper, winner of season 3. And yes, yeah, similar to Heather, the guy completely outshined everyone the entire season with his cooking and leadership skills. But again, I simply just can't put him much higher than 10 due to him facing only 11 other chefs, when some winners faced nearly double the amount of chefs, challenges, and services that Rock dealt with. And honestly, I think Heather had a better performance throughout her time than Rock, with just as good, if not better, leadership. You know, while Rock had plenty of great services, winning two best of the worst, he did have a few mistakes here and there. It was even put up for elimination at the final five, 
the first time ever a winner had been nominated, and he had some really bad looks as well during his season, such as not preparing his signature dish and going ballistic after losing the photo shoot reward. But what just edges rock out over Heather for me is the much stronger cast of season 3. I mean, like I already said, season 2 casts were basically all really bad other than Heather and Keith, and Keith just doesn't have that head chef look that Ramsay wants, so Heather wins was clear as day. While Rock had to deal with great chefs such as Julia, Jen, and Bonnie, who granted all had their bad moments, but were much stronger and stood a much greater chance at winning than anyone from season 2. So while Rock is an amazing chef, leader, and one of the first legends of the show along with Heather, his more competitive cast is just what edges him out over Heather, despite his weaker performance throughout the season, and he does get a spot in my top 10. Now at number 9, we have one of the most passionate chefs to ever step foot in Hell's Kitchen, and that is the winner of season 9, Paul Niederman. And Paul's an interesting winner to rank when you consider the circumstances of his season and how hard it is to rank his competition considering that this was one of the most rigged seasons by Ramsey, setting home chefs far too early in order to keep Elise around. But as a chef, Paul was an absolute standout as he and Will absolutely took control of the Blues team kitchen for basically the entire season. Now he had some very bad hiccups along the way, I mean he had a terrible service in episode 6 which resulted in nomination, he got kicked out of service at the final 9, and let's face it, Will was all around a much superior chef both leadership and service wise compared to Paul. It's just that Paul had a far better final dinner service performance to which you have to give credit to Paul for absolutely commanding his kitchen, especially when his team involved carrying a lease. But I mean, had Will even been like 10% better at the final dinner service, he more than likely beats Paul because he was just so much more of a dominant chef that season. And again, chefs like Elizabeth, Jennifer, and even Jamie and Gina were all eliminated far too soon in order to keep Elise around. And I'm not saying these chefs were better than or would have beat Paul, but it's such a hard season to judge talent-wise as we didn't get to see more of certain chefs. So while Paul was an absolute standout leader, had amazing services with Will, to the point where they were the only good chefs at certain services, he did also have his bad services and was outshined by Will the entire season. So when you combine the insane highs with the notable lows, along with the hard to assess talent he competed against, it ultimately lands him here at number 9. Now at number 8 we have the winner of the most recent season of Hell's Kitchen and tied as the youngest winner of the show, finally the winner of Hell's Kitchen Young Guns, Trenton Garvey. And maybe I have him a bit too high as obviously I just watched him, but he is such an interesting winner of the show. You know, like I said earlier, Trenton is not a guy who you look at and think of as a head chef of a Gordon Ramsay restaurant, and he definitely didn't come across as a leader. I would even say probably the least leader presence for all the winners other than Holly, but I think that makes him winning all that more impressive. This season was filled with talent, and he was the one who shined the brightest. He absolutely dominated challenges, and you know, again, to be fair, I just watched his season, so his challenge dominance stands out more than other winners who may have been great challenge performers, but I just don't remember as fondly because, you know, obviously you remember services, you know, and leadership a lot better, but still, take nothing away from Trenton. Ramsey called him out numerous times to tell him just how impressed he was by him, and he pretty much made no mistakes in dinner services other than Chicken Gate. And while his final four pass wasn't great, I think it was better than Kaya's. So the final three twists didn't help him there, as I think he makes a final two in any season. And I think he really showed his voice at the perfect time in the final dinner service, and absolutely outperformed Megan. And all this while being only 23. So yeah, Trent is an interesting one, and maybe even a little unfair one to place, considering the season just ended. And I remember his time obviously a lot more than, say, Janelle or Latasha. But despite his lack of leadership presence throughout the season, I think he definitely proved his leadership at the end, and I think he is one of the most dominant challenge and dinner service performers in Hell's Kitchen history. So while not quite a top tier winner, I definitely think he deserves a spot in the top 10, and he ultimately lands here at 8. Now at number 7, I have someone who's run as an absolute top tier performance, but when you look at her competition, especially compared to other seasons, you know, especially for the winners in front of her, I unfortunately have to knock her, and that is Kimberly Ann Ryan, aka Ryan, the winner of season 16. And like I said, Ryan had one of the most dominant performances in Hell's Kitchen history, as really the only thing she was criticized for during her time in Hell's Kitchen was her lack of communication and leadership presence during services. And she beat two very worthy competitors in Heidi and Heather at the final three, as the three of them really carried the red team throughout the season, with Ryan being easily the most outstanding out of the three. But I mean, come on, look at the competition this season. This is just behind season 8 for the least talented group of chefs in Hell's Kitchen history, with the blue team far and away being the worst blue team in Hell's Kitchen history. I mean, Paulie is Trev levels of bad for Final Four, and he was the last man standing. 
I mean, you could argue that chefs like Kimberly, Andrew Devin, and even Shayna had their moments, but there was just no consistency this season from anyone other than the top three. And while you have to give credit to Ryan for very much outshining the great chefs of Heather and Heidi, her other competition was extremely poor. So despite her incredible performance, with my criteria taking into account the talent level of cast, I can't put her in top five when she was against the second worst cast ever. So seven will have to do. Now at number six, we have a chef who completely dominated Hell's Kitchen at such a young age, the winner of Hell's Kitchen season five, Danny Veltri. And for Danny, he got off to a rocky start with one of the worst signature dishes in Hell's Kitchen history and mouthed off to Ramsay at the first service. But after that, he simply dominated the season in every aspect of Hell's Kitchen. He was a standout chef in services despite being so young and inexperienced and commanded the kitchen throughout most of the season and during the end portion as well and absolutely deserved the win over Paula, one of the most competitive final twos in Hell's Kitchen history. Now season 5 is a really hard season to dissect the talent of chefs as I think this was Pete Gordon Ramsay who is literally 10 times worse than he is nowadays. You know people like Andrea Ben and Giovanni made a lot of mistakes in her time but I definitely don't think this cast is as bad as a cast like season 16 for example. But it's not as strong as some other seasons, mainly the season that the chef at number 5 won. Which is why Danny is just out of the top 5, but nonetheless a great chef, and he lands here at number 6. Now at number 5, we have the winner of the second best newbie cast in Hell's Kitchen history, Corey Sutton, winner of season 19. Now honestly, she's not as dominant as some of the other winners who are below her. You know, I think people like Danny and Ryan had a much more dominant run in Hell's Kitchen. But to me, what puts her in the top 5 is not only did she beat one of the best group of chefs ever, but she did so being a 37 year old woman, the oldest winner in Hell's Kitchen history. I mean, Ramsay is not a fan of having near 40 year old people as his head chef, especially when that chef comes across as a motherly figure. You know, Corey is not exactly what you think of when you think of a Gordon Ramsay head chef. Yet she won despite there being so much competition, which really just goes to show how great her performance was, especially during her time at the past and final dinner service. She beat the likes of Cody, Nikki, and Jordan who all showed winner potential at some point or another, and beat Mary Lou in the finale, someone who on paper is the clear frontrunner to win just based on her age and personality. But that again just goes to show how strong of a leader Corey was during her time in Hell's Kitchen. And like I said, she wasn't perfect. She had a couple below average services and challenge performances. And I don't think this was really a standout chef compared to some other chefs that season. But I can't deny just how great her end performance was. So good that she beat one of the best cast in Hell's Kitchen history, all while being a 37 year old woman. Which just goes to show the amount of respect Ramsay had for her, and the amount of respect I have for her, which puts her in my top 5. Now at number 4, I have one of the most legendary chefs in Hell's Kitchen history due to her association with Ramsay after the show, and that alone I think puts her at the top of a lot of people's list. But at number 4, I have the winner of Hell's Kitchen Season 10 and the Red Team sous chef from Seasons 15-20, to 20, Christina Wilson. And for me, the real big knock I have against Christina is her awful performance at the first service, and I actually think there's a good chance she might have been the first boo of the season. Because here's the thing, I'm sure it would have been her and Roshi up for elimination had the Red Team lost that service. And while you would think Roshi would be the obvious first boot for completely failing out the scallops we saw that Ramsey obviously saw a lot in her given her so many chances during the season and I think Christina could have been in serious trouble against her if they went up against each other for elimination but other than that massive scare I mean she did fantastic this season Ramsey loved kicking chefs out one at a time instead of everyone at the same time and Christina was never one of those people to get kicked out she and Dana basically controlled the bitchiness of the red team at all times. I mean, I can't imagine what it must have been like to deal with the likes of Barbie, Robin, Kimmy, and Tiffany yelling at each other every single day, and yet still dominating the season. She was basically flawless after her first service in both the challenges and dinner services, and is one of Hell's Kitchen's best leaders to the point where she's basically become Ramsay's protege. And originally, I actually did have her a bit lower due to believing that I thought Justin was the better chef this season, and just how close, again, she could have been to being the first boot. But the more I looked into things, the more I realized you know Justin was far more inconsistent throughout the season and he wasn't dealing with the abrasive personalities that Christina was on the red team so Christina is definitely a Hell's Kitchen legend but I do think she could have been in some trouble at the first nomination and even if she didn't go home having that near elimination could have affected her performance and confidence throughout the season and that bad start is literally the only thing that puts her out of the top three as she is indeed one of Hell's Kitchen's best all-around chefs now at three, the big time top tier, we have our second returning chef winner, 
but this winner absolutely deserved it much more than Michelle did. And that is Ariel Fox, winner of Hell's Kitchen Rookies vs. Veterans. And yeah, she competed against some of Hell's Kitchen's best. And while you could argue that she had the advantage of being a two-time player against a bunch of rookies, these rookies were some of the best newbie chefs in Hell's Kitchen history, making a stiff competition throughout. And it's not like this is a show like, again, like Big Brother Survivor, where you get a massive advantage playing a second time against a bunch of newbies. I mean, I, I don't know. I guess you might have a slight advantage, but you're really grasping for straws at that point. And yeah, so I know I sound repetitive, but she completely thrived throughout the season in both challenges and services, showed incredible leadership, and beat arguably the second strongest cast in Hell's Kitchen in history, even stronger than All-Stars in my opinion. Now the big thing to question when it comes to Ariel's win is the model quit and how much that affected her chances obviously in winning, as I definitely think we're in for a model Ariel final too. And I think that's a really big toss up in who wins. You know, Mato is great, but I didn't get that sense of fire in him during the season, which obviously showed when he quit. So I do think Ariel beats Mato as well, though you could argue that Mato was the best chef that season. So in the end, while some people may nitpick, as I certainly have nitpicked when making these rankings, Ariel being a two-time player shouldn't affect her ranking at all in my opinion. In fact, it could be a boost considering she made the final three against two of the best chefs ever in Season 6, and I do think she beats everyone in Season 18, including Mato. So with her second Amazing Hell's Kitchen performance and beating an amazing cast, which included some of Hell's Kitchen's best chefs ever, she's definitely a top-tier winner and earns herself a spot at number three. Now, number two, we have a chef who I know a lot of people consider the best, especially with what this person went through during Hell's Kitchen. But as a runner-up in my list, I have the winner of Hell's Kitchen Season 6, Dave Levy. And yeah, the guy dominated Hell's Kitchen while breaking his freaking arm. And he had some heavy competition, being arguably the best runner-up ever in Kevin, and also being a future winner in Ariel. Now, there are a couple minor hiccups for Dave, as he had a couple of really bad challenge performances. I mean, his signature dish was really bad, and Ramsey was legit laughing at him in one of his challenges for the dish he sent up. And his leadership wasn't exactly top tier like some of these other winners. But at the end of the day, you can't deny what this guy was able to do in Elle's Kitchen against an amazing group of chefs, peak Gordon Ramsay, while only having one arm to work with. Simply an unreal performance, and again, that alone makes him the best winner for most people. But for me, there's a clear front runner, but that's not to take anything away from the legendary Dave Levy. And finally, we've reached the top, and at number one, and I mean, come on, it's Megan Gill from Hell's Kitchen Season 14. And yeah, obviously she doesn't have the caveat of dominating the season with a broken bone, but to be honest, I think she would dominate if she had seven broken bones in her body. I mean, she was just on another level from every chef in the history of Hell's Kitchen, to the point where you kind of question why she was even put on the show in the first place, as it was basically like gifting somebody a head chef spot. And let's not forget, Season 14 is easily the most talented group of chefs in the history of the show, with T winning pretty much every other season she's on with her Season 14 performance, and we did in fact get a future winner from this season, with Ramsay basically rigging this show in order for her to win. And we can all agree that Nick deserved to win All-Stars, making that basically three other winners from this season that Megan completely blew out of the water. There's also plenty of other great chefs from this season like Josh, Millie, Randy, and Allison, and even chefs like Christine, Sarah, and Brett all have their moments this season, with the latter making it to the final three in season 18. I mean, I think she legit made one small mistake all season, and she basically had a meltdown over that mistake. She was unbelievable on the line, an amazing leader, and dominated the best group of chefs to ever step foot in Hell's Kitchen, and is without question the best winner and chef in Hell's Kitchen history, in my opinion. Thank you guys for watching, and again, please go easy on me in the comments over these rankings, as obviously I had to really reach for some of these rankings, and I haven't rewatched every season and know every winner to a T, so these are just general thoughts on all the winners in Hell's Kitchen history, which I thought would be a fun video to do. But with that said, if you like what you see, then hit that like and subscribe button, especially if you'd like to see more Hell's Kitchen content on this channel, and let me know in the comments what kind of HK content you would like to see me potentially make down the road. Have a good one, guys.